Hello, my name is Ruben Mesa, and I'm the Executive Director of the Mays Cancer Center at UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson. Managing the side effects of fedratinib is something that we have learned uh, quite a bit about over the time that the drug has been both in clinical trials as well as now in practice. And on behalf of investigators, we presented at the American Society of Hematology meeting in 2021 uh, updated information from the FREEDOM trial. This is a phase 3B trial evaluating the safety and efficacy of fedratinib in patients with model fibrosis previously treated with bruxolidinib. This is a, an updated version of a trial that Professor Harrison and I and others had done in the past called the Jakarta 2 study. In this study, we identified and validated the further side effects that had been noted earlier in the conduct of the fedratinib studies. That first, the main side effect that needs to be managed is related to gastrointestinal side effects, nausea, diarrhea. What was noted in the studies is that these would, were prevalent, that they were mainly uh, an issue during cycle one, but also that they responded well to prophylactic therapy for management, both with anti-nausea medicines and with anti-diarrheals. I can share from my own personal experience, in addition to the clinical trial experience, for those patients of which I prescribe fedratinib, which has been commercially available in the United States since the fall of 2019. I typically will give patients anti-nausea and anti-diarrheals so that they have them on hand. And as they begin the therapy, can start on these therapies in a prophylactic manner and then wean them off as tolerated. And in most circumstances, patients are able to wean off either entirely or completely from these medications. Additionally, we found with this approach and reflected in the Freedom Study that patients needing to discontinue the drug on this basis is uh, at a very, very modest rate. The next issue is regarding the issue of thiamine. Uh, it is a black box warning with fedratinib that one needs to monitor for thiamine levels before initiating the drug, replacement of thiamine if there is an inadequate level, and monitor for Wernicke's encephalopathy. The origin of this was that in earlier clinical trials, prior to this having been identified, there were a series of cases in uh, roughly 1% of patients treated where a Wernicke's encephalopathy was noted. We have found that following the guidelines as it relates to the package labeling with fedratinib has been impactful. Uh, and that the uh, replacement of thiamine uh, is easily accomplished. It's an inexpensive vitamin. I would say in our own clinical practice, we typically have pac placed patients on thiamine and have really not seen it become an issue. In the conduct of the studies, the uh, systematic approach of monitoring thiamine levels, appropriate replacement, has been effective in helping prevent that from really manifesting as an issue for patients treated with fedratinib. So I'd conclude by saying that the ongoing studies are validating the prior studies, that there's significant safety and efficacy with the use of fedratinib in the second line setting for patients with myelofibrosis with good rates of improvement in splenomegaly and symptoms. And that these side effects, both monitoring for thiamine levels, as well as GI side effects, are easily manageable, uh, but to take uh, some observation, uh, the use of prophylactic GI medications is recommended and then weaning as patients tolerated. We look forward to learning more reported at this year's ASH and upcoming meetings regarding expanding the utilization of fedratinib in a variety of different settings, alone and in combinations. Thank you.